We, we're good to start? No. All right. Um, hey, everyone. My name is Michael. Uh, I know it's like last, last lecture of the day. I know you probably must be tired, so I'm going to try and keep it uh, short and, uh, well, I don't know about entertained, but uh, with high energy. Um, so, as I said, um, my name is Michael. I work in a conference uh, SRE team back in uh, Sydney, Atlassian. Um, and um, I want to talk, you, talk with you about logging. Um, but first of all, just I kind of want to get like the feel of my crowd. Is there anyone here who never used logging before? And I mean like the standard library logging uh, model? It's like sort of like, no, no. <laughs> okay, no, no. Uh, anyone here that um, tried using log logging and just going to Stack Overflow and like copy and paste until it works? Yeah, okay, I got one, <laughs> I got two, <laughs> three, <laughs> cool. Um, and I, gu I guess some of you also like fall back to print when it stops working as well. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so uh, my, um, my goal today is not to try and cause you to stop using print. I think like print, there, like there is space to use it, especially if your application is like focused on outputting data to, you, to your user through the terminal. Uh, but uh, whenever you start writing any daemon services or applications that run in background and you need some kind of a feedback either for you or for your developers, you probably want to start thinking about logging. Um, so, again, this is like, <laughs> this is why, why do, why do I care and why should you, should you care as well? Uh, I, I'm not a developer. Um, I define myself as a system administrator, operations guy. Basically, SRE is like a glorified uh, system admin, in my opinion. And um, when problem strikes in production, logging is my first go-to, right? Uh, it's usually that, usually I have only logging in place. Uh, and debugging problems, good logs and bad logs make a world of difference, basically. Um, so I care deeply about this, and I think that you as an application developer, you should care about it deeply as well, because uh, essentially your application is not only what it does, like the thing, but also how easy it to operate, how easy it to, to observe what it does. And if you only, I don't know, log stack traces when problems break, when uh, things break, uh, I have really tough time to try to debug it. Um, so. Unless, I don't know, maybe somebody here within the embedded world, which is like makes this much more trickier, I think everybody should, should think well about their login and how they uh, make the job of person who actually debugs the problem a bit more easier. Um, so, um, obviously, can't we just use print? So like I said, I'm not saying you shouldn't use print, but um, whenever you need to, let's say you need like a different verbosity level, so you have like a CLI tool and you need to have like dash dash debug or dash dash verbose, login makes it much more easier than writing your own. Um, customizing, your, customizing your output format um, and actually making it customizable by your user, login makes it much more easier. Um, Contextual logging, so let's say you have a web server like, I don't know, something like Flask, and you have a request coming in, and now this request causes like three or four different log events. With logging, you can add like a context to each log, so it will bind your, uh, your log event with the actual request, so you can understand the context of your log. Um, and it supports uh, multiple destinations as well, so let's say you want to, uh, to log your errors to your error file, and you want to log your regular, I don't know, access logs to your access log file. Uh, again, logging makes it much more, much more easier, and it provides pretty awesome uh, configuration mechanism, not only for your stuff, but also for your dependency stuff. So I'll show it uh, as we go, um, but it's something like which is always kind of, people miss, miss this point. Um, so, like I said, uh, Python standard library. 
It's pretty mature since 2003. Um, I never used Python 2.3 before, so it's pretty mature. Uh, it's inspired by Log4j from Java. Uh, I say inspired, not not just copy copy pasted. It's much more compact. It's, I think it's uh, maybe three files and like 3,000 lines or something like that. Um, it's thread safe, so basically if you log from different sa different uh, threads, they won't overlap each other. Uh, it provides common uh, interface for uh, configuration, and that's we'll see it uh, as we go. And often been blamed for being too complex, non pentonic and a lot of stack overflow questions. Uh, why why it doesn't log? Why it log twice? And so on and so forth. Um, so there's three parts. I'm going to talk about the basics, the, I guess, the just like the basic steps that you need to just start logging. And then I'm going to talk about uh, how do you log if your library or application have multiple models. And in the end, I'll also include uh, more advanced stuff that I think is like where is uh, logging really shines and presents itself. Uh, so everything starts with logger. Uh, when I say logger, I mean uh, logger object. Uh, you can think about loggers as those channels where you uh, put your information in, and in the end they will uh, emit some kind of uh, emit that information to some destination that you define. Uh, and this is a simplified view of your uh, of your loggers. There is a, uh, on the top there is some kind of a basic level uh, filter, and there is a bunch of handlers that you can attach to it. Uh, all of those components are. Um, are optional, so it's totally possible that the logger will be completely uh, naked without filter and without handler. Um, and I'll, I'll, uh, I'll talk about what happens in that case a bit uh, further on. Um, so, oh, sorry, sorry about that. Okay, yeah, so this is a basic snippet of how you initialize logger and start logging. Um, just four lines, I guess, you import logging, you use the get logger call to get your logo, your channel. You give it a name. In my case, it's my app. Uh, you set some kind of a level to it and add a handler. And that's it. You're ready to log. So uh, logger exposes uh, those, I guess, interfaces to logging. There is a number of built-in levels, debug, info, warning, error, critical exception. And you can define your own, but I think it's very rare. I, I never actually saw anyone define their own. Um, there is also, if you if you see in the logger.info call, there is like um, a templating uh, built in into the logger calls. You can use your own like format call, or you can do that. Um, this is a bit more optimized because the formatting will actually be done only if uh, if the level is uh, is just right. So you will kind of you will save a few CPU cycles. Um, the levels themselves are thresholds. Okay, so they're not, so if you set your logger to be debug level, it doesn't mean that you'll, it will only log debug, it means it will log debug and above. And like if you set it to uh, error, it means that it will only log error and above. So this is like one point that kind of um, uh, sometimes people uh, uh, miss. Um, now handlers, um, handlers are what, it's basically what makes uh, your, um, it, it, it what emits your messages to different destinations. Um, and oh, by the way, I totally forgot, if you guys have any question, please raise your hand. Uh, you will help me <laughs> because uh, I totally forgot. Sorry, uh, nervous. So any question, keep like, no problem at all. Um, so um, this is the handler. Um, again, it's a simplified view. Uh, I'm omitting a few details. Handler have a level as, as well, just like a just like a logger, but it's a completely ind independent level. Okay, uh, it has a formatter, which I'll explain above uh, next, and it has some magic. This magic can be anything from writing stuff to a file, writing uh, writing stuff over a network to your uh, I don't know uh, some syslog server, uh, sending emails, um, sending stuff to console, and so on. Um, so the, format, the formatters are what defines like 
the format of your output to that destination. So if you think about, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to write stuff to file, formatter, formatter is what actually will define that format of, of the information that will be emitted to file. So you can just, you can just define something like uh, some simple line format, or you can go crazy and maybe do stuff in JSON, for example, right? So formatters are the way where you're going to define how this information is going to be uh, like serialized. Um, the formatter itself, um, if you can see, it uses, again, it uses a templating uh, um, format. Uh, and the, uh, the attributes that I use, that they are uh, actually uh, attributes that um, exist in the uh, logger, uh, in the log object. So basically the log object is what created when you call your logger with dot .info, dot .error, uh, and so on. Uh, there are plenty of other attributes. I'm not going to show them, but everything uh, that I explained is in the docs, so you can take a peek. Uh, in my case, level name is your logging level. So if you do uh, logger.info, that will be info here. Uh, name is our logger name, so in my case it will be my app. And message is the message that we passed. Um, and also, if you don't defo define your formatter, there will be always a default one, which will be pretty ugly. Um, right, and Python comes with plenty of built-ins, uh, built-in handlers. Um, I'm going to just focus on those four. Uh, I think those are the most important one. Others, they, they do have, uh, in my opinion, they, they have a place, but if your application is like, I don't know, running in, in a real production environment, um, you probably already have some kind of a logging pipeline set up. You probably have some, I don't know, log stash agent running or some log shipper that takes your files and ships them to some place else. And you don't really want to slow down your app with rotating files or sending emails, probably not sending emails. Um, so in, my case, in our case, stream handler is basically for your console, standard, standard error, standard out, file handler for writing to fi files. Now handler is a special handler which just drops everything and we'll see why it's important. And I'll mention queue handler and queue listener in the end. Um, so with that knowledge, I guess, in mind, uh, we are ready to, I guess, use mul multiple handlers. And it's, it's a bit a long example, but there is really nothing to it. It's just like I doubled everything. We still have one logger in, in the beginning. Uh, we're, we have two handlers, so we have a file, and we have a, a stream handler, which will log to our uh, standard output. We have some kind of a basic uh, formatter, which I use in both handlers. And then I set, I set levels, but if you notice, I set my levels, um, I set my logger level as debug, but my handler level as error, right? And then I just add, add both of those handlers to, to my logger. So what happens here is that my console will get all of my info, all of my messages, but only my file, my error dot, errors.log, will get my errors messages. And this is already kinda, kinda cool because now you can, you can, you can have your errors log and when you, when you need to, like, your, your user reports to you, hey, I got a problem, ask him to send you, to send errors log, for example, if your error, errors are very, are very useful in that, uh, of course. Um, so, very, very easy to implement. If you're going to try to implement it without login, probably it will take some try and effort. Um, so, that's, that's basic, basically it. This is the basic part. Um, Second part of it is, yo, yeah. Sorry, yeah, of course. Yeah, 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 it's good, good, yeah. Um, say you've got your logger um, set level to debug. Say on your standard out, your streaming handler, yeah. you set that to info. Yeah. And your logger you set to debug. Yeah. Is that trying to make the debug message that are going nowhere? If you only have stream, so the question is, if you have uh, your, lo your logger set to debug, and you have only one handler, and that handler set to info, does it make the debug messages go away? Uh, yes. Um, yes, if you only have one handler, yes. Yeah. 
Um, I'm going to go back to this. There is a slight edge case. Why, why I thought for it for a second? There is a slight edge case. What happens if you have no handlers? And I'm going to come back to it in the end. Um, yes. Oh, sure, sure, sure. You are not setting the logging level for STD out. So yeah. So, so that, that, yes. I don't set a logging level for STD out. So basically, if the handler does not have any, any level, everything, everything goes in. So uh, it's just accept everything. That's a good point. Thanks. Um, so multiple files, I guess. Um, so one thing that is super, like, <laughs> I, th I think it's not, um, the, the dogs don't put enough attention on this detail, is that logging is, is basically have a, a, a manager. It, it, um, it create, when you use it and you create your loggers, you basically you register it to a, to a common manager that uh, shares states between all of, the, all, all of your models and under the same process. So what it means is that, let's say you have a main PY and your, I don't know, API PY, and main PY is your entry point, right? It's your, I don't know, this is where your command line comes from. If you define your loggers in main PY, and then you're going to call get logger from some other file with the same name, you'll get the same object, okay? Um, so you don't need to pass loggers between, uh, between your models. You can just call it like this, right? So this is one point that you, we need to keep in mind as we go forward. Uh, but yeah, uh, just if you take anything from my, my presentation, <laughs> I guess take this. Um, logger hi hierarchy. So we can easily replicate our, uh, our model structure by using this uh, common pattern. This is, this is what is recommended in the documentation. So dunder name, uh, and you'll get if, if you do logger, get logger, dunder name in every model of your library, you'll get basically a nice structure where every logger actually, um, I guess, um, goes together. So basically, we'll get something like this, right? So this is the, uh, the, the blue boxes are our loggers, and uh, we have our files, uh, and we're going to replicate our package. Um, this is not only for... Uh, for aesthetics, there is actually some power behind it. But before I go into this, one small caveat that you need to remember: um, dunder name can be dunder dunder name can be equals dunder main if your uh, if if your file is your entry point. Keep that in mind because sometimes you suddenly like you will change how you execute so, uh, your uh, program. So, for example, we saw a nice uh, nice presentation about entry points. Uh, when you will use entry points, everything will work just fine because name will be actually your model. But if you if you going to um, if you're going to call your program with just Python and your model name, this will change to main, and suddenly you won't see your logs. Okay, so keep that in mind. If you use this uh, um, this pattern, uh, your logs suddenly can just go away, and like what's going on? Uh, this so this is the reason. Um, so like I said, this is our structure. It's so nice and cool. What this structure actually allows us is to um, a feature called prop propagation. Okay? So basically what happens is if we have our myapp.cli logger and we, do, and we submit, submit some kind of message to it, um, this message is actually going to traverse the entire tree of the loggers. Okay? Um, it's a, it's, a, it's a nice feature, but it will probably be responsible for, I don't know, maybe 60% of the question on Stack Overflow. And the reason is because a lot of times uh, we set handlers on multiple loggers in the, in the tree, in the tr <coughs> propagation tree. And this is why we have multiple, multiple lines of, uh, of output in our logs and console and stuff like that. Uh, and this is because of propagation. Uh, it is possible to disable it. I don't think you should, but uh, there is a um, um, parameter called propagate equals true false. You can disable it. Um, but um, the real, uh, like, I think what you really should do is you should set all of your settings on your base logger and just keep it there. Uh, and this, it, what, what it will mean is that your, uh, 
your log message here. So we'll, we won't have any handlers defined here. And your message is going to bounce down. It will get some kind of handler that is applied on my app. We'll emit your information to, I don't know, console, to your file, and go, go on. And usually root doesn't have any, any handlers, so you shouldn't see anything here. Um, this is um, this is the most, I guess, powerful thing because now you can uh, you can set different settings, different filters, and I'll, I'll get to filters in the in the end uh, on on per per module, uh, I guess granularity. But you usually you you only want to set it on your base logger, which in our case is uh, my app. So. This is propagation, um, and there is another interesting effect, which is the like, okay, what happens if you don't if you don't set levels, right? Um, so let's say you have a you have a logger level which is debug on your base my app logger, uh, and you have um, no level set, which basically is called no set. Uh, you have no level set on your my app CLI. Uh, so basically what happens is that the uh, logging library will traverse the tree until it finds the first level, and this is, will be your effective level. Uh, in this example, its output is 10, uh, because um, internally uh, the level, t level 10 is debug in, in logging. So this, if you combine both of, those, um, both of those properties, this is what you need to remember. If you do use this pattern of dunder name, you should usually set your loggers on your base logger of your application, unless you have really good reasons to also add some other handlers on, um, on your, uh, I guess, children, uh, the, the, the children logs. Um, so that's, that's, that's what you should do when you have multiple logs, multiple uh, models, and you, and you want to, to do ni really nice logging. Um, and the last, the last part is about basically mixing everything up together and seeing uh, what else we can get from logging. So this is an example of how you can also control um, logs of your dependencies. So let's say that everybody uses requests nowadays, I think. Uh, requests underneath uses URL-lib, uh, URL-lib free to, to do a lot of the stuff. And let's say in our case, I want to see what's going on when I do um, and I do request.get to google.com. Um, if I'll, if I'll, if I'll um, configure URL, URL lib free logger to level debug and just set some nice formatter to it, it's very easy to see. Okay? So I, I see there's like four, uh, there, I, actually, I actually see the logger name, so the leftmost column is URL lib uh, connection pool. This is the uh, model where the, um, where the action is being done. I have my level, which is debug, and I have some kind of um, message string which uh, pretty much explains to me what's going on. Um, this is super, super, uh, super nice because let's say you're working with stuff like SQL Alchemy or, I don't know, Boto or any other big library and you're hitting the wall and you don't, know, you don't understand what's going on. This can, this can help you understand what's going on. Uh, and not only, like it, you don't need to even do it in code because you can actually um, give this interface of, con of configuration to your users. Um, I'm, I'm not going to show example how, but if you look for logging.config, which is the um, configuration model, uh, which allows like more um, file-based configuration to your logging, you can pretty much um, have your sysadmins or whatever, whoever runs your applications to enable logging of dependencies that you never gave, uh, gave possibility to do it. So this is super, super cool and, and, uh, and you should definitely take use of it. Now, um, if, you want, if you want to enable your, your um, library users to do the same thing, it's very simple. Just use log logging and document, document your base logger name. So let's say, again, if you go to my app, Let's say you, your, your application is called My App. Put it in your documentation under the login section. Hey, if you want to use my logging, this is, the, um, this is my logger name. Uh, and, and, and maybe like a snippet of how to enable debug logging, and you're, you're good. Um, the other thing that you should definitely do 
is to attach this special null handler to your uh, base logger. Um, the reason that you should do it is because Python has, uh, the logging uh, model has a very special, um, special behavior when it comes to what happens is there is no handler set at all, okay? Uh, it, it changes between Python 2 and 3, and oh, by the way, I totally forgot, uh, this, all, all the examples here are Python 3. Uh, Python 2 is kind of dead to me, but it's not, it's not, uh, there's no, there no breaking break um, compatibility change, just 3 is a bit more nicer to use, but everything I did you can adjust to Python 2. Uh, so what happens if uh, there is no handler set at all and you're trying to log will, will change. In Python 2, you will get this cryptic message saying, no handler set, blah, 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 blah. And in Python 3, there's two, two options. If, you, if, you, if your log message is um, info or debug, you just won't see it. And in, um, if it's warning or above, you will see it in, in, uh, in your, uh, in your uh, standard error uh, with just the default formatter. Um, so if you're a library author and you want to give the, um, the power of like Set, uh, setting loggers and seeing your, uh, seeing your internal debug logging, make sure you always set null handler on your uh, base, uh, base, uh, base logger. And obviously you shouldn't, like, you shouldn't enforce anything else. Like don't try to log on default because that's just not, that's just not nice. Um, so and last, last thing I want to talk to you about is uh, filters. Filters are a bit of a confusing term because they are much more powerful, powerful than just filtering. Um, filters are available in both handlers and loggers. And uh, they basically they have two options. Either they allow you to create a more fine-grained uh, logging. So let's say, you want, uh, let's say you want to have debug and info log messages in standard, standard out and warning and above in your standard error. With, with the current tools, you can't do that because you basically, because it's threshold-based system, you will, your, uh, your uh, standard out will include both errors and, and uh, the regular messages. So filter allows you to, to create those kind of rules. And also they, because the way they work, they actually receive the entire log record so they can manipulate it. So here's the actual how logger and hand, handler look. So, we also have this, another layer of filters. So it can be one or it can be a couple. And the same thing for handlers. Um, and here's a quick, like, simple filter, right? It's, it can be a callable. It gets the record. Uh, and in, in our case, basically, this filter, if you attach it to your uh, logger or handler, it will pretty much just drop everything but info messages. But the more important, like, the more nicer use case is, I guess, this. and. I'm sorry, like, I try to bring better example, but this is what I had in mind, I had to share it. Uh, if anyone here uses Flask? Okay, five, six people, cool. Uh, so Flask has the concept of um, context, request context. Uh, basically, you can store variables in the context which are uh, um, connected to the same request, incoming request. So using this functionality uh, and using logging, you can, you can do basic contextual logging. Uh, so in, in my case, um, we just check, are we in a Flask uh, context um, block? So basically, do we, have, do we have context? If we do, we try to get a request ID from the context. Okay? If there is, great. If there is no, we generate, it one, we generate one and we store it in the context. And in the end, the most like, important part is we store the, the request ID inside of the record, okay? So this, this uh, gives us basically, if we format it correctly, we will get uh, in our logs also the, the request ID of our, uh, of our uh, log. So we can connect between the error and the actual request that we had. And this is, this is very powerful because if you have like, I don't know, 100 requests a minute and you have an error, okay, well, like which, which request was, was the, the cause of that. Um, so this is, this is the coolness of filters. Um, do I have a few more minutes? 
I guess I, I, I'm already like 30 minutes now, so yeah, so I, I need just like two more minutes, I guess. Uh, just a few, few words on uh, performance. Um, there is this nice method called is enabled for. Uh, use it if you have some kind of an expensive logging. Uh, so let's say this expensive function will take, I don't know, five seconds, uh, and you only want it in debug. This is the tool you should probably, like, this is the gate you should use to, to stop it from ex uh, do this expensive commutation. Um, don't try and create logger for, I don't know, every request or some unbounded, unbounded number of, of, of things like, I don't know, logger for every user or logger for every request or something like this because they are stored in this, gen, in this global state. They won't ever be garbage collected because of that. So you will just run out of memory. Um, Handlers, they, I think all of them, except for the queue and list, and the queue handler and queue listener, all of them are blocking. So let's say you decide to send email message from your logs. For some reason you have a network issue and the SMTP server never responds, your app will block. Sometimes it's good, think about, I don't know, you're, you're logging uh, auditing stuff, you're logging like user purchasing or registration, you want your system to fail because of auditors. So you want to block until you actually write it to disk or something. Um, if you want to unblock it, you need to probably check into uh, queue handler and queue listener. There is a very nice uh, couple of examples of how to use it. So you basically create a queue and you uh, send your uh, messages into that queue instead of uh, doing some blocking call. Um, and yeah, and that's, that's pretty much it. Free resources that you should probably be aware of. Uh, the last two, the, this is like the Python, Python docs, they got m much, much better in the last few, I don't know, years, I guess, but it's, it's worth taking a look, especially the, the cookbook and the tutorials. Um, the first one is actually the, the blog of uh, Vinay Sajip, I hope I say his name correctly. He's the creator of logging. He got some really good logging blog posts about like decisions behind why they made stuff this and, this and, and, and that. And if you're curious, you should definitely check it. And yeah, that's it. I'm, I think I'm done. You guys got any questions? Yeah. So what's your final way to work in the morning? Do you actually wait for one more minute? Um, you, like, you mean in? In your app, so my prefer, yeah, my preferable way is to is to is to uh, raise the right, I guess, level to my to my problems. So I, I try to throw errors when it's really an error. So um, it's very easy to get in a situation when you have like I don't know your your log is full of errors uh, and exceptions, and those are like normal exceptions. But for me. Exception is not normal. Like it's an exception. It's by definition shouldn't be something that my log is like full of them. Uh, so I use I use the levels in very cautious way. So if if tomorrow I'm going to say okay I, I I'm gonna log only errors. I I want I really want my my logs to be clean of them. Okay. So I don't I don't run production in debug mode for that say. Okay, so debug mode for me is for de development, local development, and I don't know, warning and above, or, or critical, or sorry, error and above is for, uh, for prod. Is that uh, answers your question? <laughs> oh, you mean, you mean, you mean, the, okay. What, what, okay, you mean the warnings, uh, the warnings model, right? In fact, okay, sorry. Warnings model, I think, are really good to like if you want to mark something as uh, as it's going away or it's not going to be supported in the next version, or like because then you actually like it pops up into your console whenever you start using it. So like, th this this is my use of warnings. But to be honest, I never really used it. I never like again. I'm not coming from the writing code for, for living. I'm more, I'm, I'm more of the person who operates that code, so I never had actually used warnings in myself, but this is, this is from my experience, this is how I saw it used. Uh, so, yeah. Yes? Um, you mentioned oh, sorry, yeah, sorry about that. 
<laughs> I didn't like j just for the video. The, the last question was about uh, the warnings and the how they compare to the login model. Yeah. Um, you mentioned log shipping before. Um, I guess when you you wanted to sort of write out to a file and then and then uh, you know use log stash or something like that yeah. to actually go and ship it. What's your view on like it seems a bit wrong to actually go and format the file out and then you've got to unpass that thing back in to sort of get to yeah. ship it off to Elastic or something like that, yeah. where it's like a structured thing. So what's your pattern? So that sort of thing? I, when I prepared my slides, I really wanted to talk about structured logs. Sadly, just like too much information to cram. Uh, I definitely, so, okay, there, there is the thing, like there is no like perfect solution. I don't want to say, oh, this is the way you should definitely do it, okay? If your application is like, I don't know, your personal script that you run on some VPC, obviously you're not going to run Logstash for it, so I don't judge anyone who does other stuff. Uh, but usually in prod, you, you want your logs to be already structured. Like we have, in the last five years, we have so many awesome tools to process log. Uh, Logstash, all the Elk stacks, all Elasticsearch, uh, Logstash, Kibana, if, uh, if, nobody, if somebody never heard about them, you should definitely Google those. Crazy, crazy powerful. Uh, pay tools like Splunk and dozens of SaaS products that uh, helps you with that. So you should probably, your logs should already pre be in some structure like JSON or um, I don't know, if you want to optimize probably some kind of a crazy protobuf, usually JSON. And then you get like two benefits. First of all, your log is already kind of like self-documented. So let's say you have a line, this request failed, um, blah, blah, blah. If you, if, you input, if you output it instead as JSON and you say, okay, success, false. Uh, URL, this URL, uh, error code, 400. When, when, you read it, when you read it, you can actually like, understand what's going on and you don't need to do any regex parsing for it and you know, crazy stuff like that because you have a number of different developers that work on, on that application. They, 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 they put crazy, for, they put like different formats like to different errors and trying to like figure that out after it, it's really hard. So you should really, you should really output your logs as structure, but only when the time is right. Don't do it like for your, I don't know, script. Would you use a formatter for that sort of thing? Is yeah, yeah, I, 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 would just, I would just use like a JSON formatter. There is no, there is no built-in JSON formatter, but if you like search GitHub, you'll find uh, dozens of implementations. This is more of a comment than a question, but um, you can also, because the Python logger is global, you can actually, um, on one of our applications, we set up an admin panel where you could actually, it passed through the loggers, and you could actually change the logging level dynamically as it was running, so that if yeah. you're having a particular issue, you could actually switch on debugging for particular parts of the application, and then once you've got enough, you could actually switch it back off again. So it's just mm -hmm. something to be aware of that you actually can do this sort of thing with a logging module, and it's really powerful. I, 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 yeah, I, I only learned about it like last week. I was reading the logs because you know when you prepare the slides, you want to like really know your stuff. And yeah, apparently that's true, and that's that's awesome. I, w one more thing I guess is worth looking for. There is a memory handler which I didn't speak about. But it kind of can be useful as well if you, if you just tweak it a bit, you can create, let's say, you can create uh, logs where you add debug info only, only whenever error happened, and they never been written as, as log if every, everything is okay. So there is some, like, it's, I know that it exists in, in log4j2, or maybe one as well, but it doesn't exist built in in, in Python. But it's something really cool that you, if you like, you want extra debug info on error, you should definitely check memory handler and adjust it. Yes. So, just asking about the file handler yeah. in um, past lives, <laughs> using log4j and that kind of thing. With oh, oh, sorry. So, in terms of the file handler. Um, do you know if Python keeps like an open file pointer or if it keeps a, a position in the file or if you can muck around and cheat and do things like 
truncate or empty the file out from under it and mm. will it, you know, get upset at you? I have no idea. Okay. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, you got me. <laughs> so maybe so. just uh, to expand on that then, if because if, you said it's better to use the file handler rather than the rotating file handler because they block and performance. Yeah, I just don't want to risk it, right? I mean, yeah. So how do you manage the size of that? Uh, like, okay, in Unix you have uh, so many small tools to like do the actual rotating. Like, uh, I, sorry, I have like a brain freeze right now, but you have like a ded dedicated facilities from the operation system to handle those. Like log rotate. That like, kind of thing. Yeah, exactly, log rotate. Yeah. Or usually a lot of times, like if you, in system D, if you use it, you can, you can just stream the logs to standard error, standard output. It will take care of your logs, it will rotate them, it will take care. So usually I just leave it to the operation system or some kind of a daemon that runs and do it for me, just because I don't want to burden my application with this uh, babysitting of logs. Cool. Thank you. No worries. Uh, so, is there any valid use case to set up the root logger handler? So, I guess if you like, if you want to see everything, like let's say you have like now application, you don't know your uh, logger names, right? You didn't find them in documentation. If you're too lazy, you can just set handler on your root logger, and you'll get everything. It can be scary, but then you can start like if you, if you set your formatter and you like set the logger, the actual logger names. Then you can see, ah, okay, I see. I have this and this and this loggers. I can now make them uh, more uh, fine grained, I guess. So I, I think this uh, valid use case. Another valid use case, uh, usually to 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 deal with some kind of uh, misconfigurations. I think so. If you if you have a library that didn't configure null handler, and they now they have like let's say critical errors, critical logs and you want to stop them and you don't know what is the like logger, you can just go to the root handler and just kill everything, right? This is another, but usually um, I, don't, I don't see a reason, uh, except maybe if you have like a basic, very basic application and you don't want to deal with all this madness, you just want to start logging, you can just start using root without, like, without giving names, without anything. And this is another valid case, I guess, so. It's, it's, re it's really, I don't think there's like a, the right way, it just def depends on your case, case by case, I guess. Awesome, thank you. Thank you very much. from you guys if like if I if you have any feedback please like tell me good stuff and especially the bad stuff because like this is what helps me uh, get better so thanks <laughs>